How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today we have a handful of simple tips for you guys that we have learned from other RVers, veteran RVers, people leaving comments in the videos, stuff that we would just love to pass along. And uh, we thought we would just compile a bunch of these simple ones and just share them with you. So let's not waste any time and let's get right into this list. So this first one is about keeping bugs out of your RV. There was one morning where I threw on my shirt and chills just went right up my spine. It was a centipede inside my shirt threw the shirt outside, killed the centipede, and I thought, I have to keep bugs out of my RV. I do not want to put a shirt on again and have a black widow or a centipede or something like that inside of my shirt. So what we do is we spray our landing gear and anything that touches the ground with some kind of bug repellent. So whatever your bug repellent of choice is, if you like going the, the natural way using cinnamon or whatever kind of thing, is it cinnamon? Mm -hmm. Ground is it cinnamon. Ground cinnamon. Mm -hmm. It really works. So if you like using something like that, or if you wanna just run to Walmart, pick up a, a squirt bottle, that's what we do. We just pick up a squirt bottle and we just try and, we don't wanna spray a bunch of everything all around us, but occasionally when we get to a new place where there's gonna be a lot of bugs, we'll just spray the landing gear, spray the, the wheel chocks, um, just anything that touches the, the ground to the RV. We just wanna spray that, keep the ants out, so that way they don't find and infiltrate some area that we didn't fully seal up with, with the food, and just keep those pesky critters out because I, I just don't wanna deal with them inside the RV. Just a side note as far as the, the drinking water hose is I, I don't like to spray that. So maybe I'll spray a little area underneath where it touches the ground and it deters them from trying to climb up on the hose. But uh, I try not to, to spray the hose or the rubber on the tires. I, I try and avoid the rubber on the tires and maybe just spray uh, the metal part behind where it connects to the RV. So just a couple of little side notes or just use the ground up cinnamon and you could have cinnamon flavored water. It's not really gonna leach in there, but I just feel better if I don't spray poison on my hose. Tip number two is how to clean those bugs off that you collect on the front of your RV when you're driving down the road. When we were going through Florida, the love bugs were so thick that it was just, it was unbelievable. People were actually having to pull over to clean their windshield at times because they were just so thick. The thing about the bugs on the RV is it can actually be really bad for your paint. The, the bug guts can be acidic. Not only do you wanna clean them off just because it, it makes it look better, but you if you leave them on there, they can bake on there and really do some damage to your paint. So protecting your RV by getting those bug guts off quickly is actually a really good idea. So the tip that we heard over and over for cleaning the bugs off was using bounce dryer sheets. Now, you have to be careful that you don't scratch your RV. So if you use it dry, it can scratch your RV. If you get them wet, most people say it does not scratch. So I tried it on the, the windshield of our truck and I have to say it cut through the, the bug guts really quick and, and really fast. It, it worked well. It did leave a residue that I had to clean off and uh, I don't know if I'm as excited about using it on the front of the RV just with the possibility of scratching and bug guts, but people swear by it. They've been doing it for years and they love it. It's the quickest, easiest way to get those bug guts off the front of your RV. My strategy for cleaning the front of the RV is usually using a microfiber towel and some good old elbow grease. So it's hard to come up with a solution short of using a hose, which you can't do in a lot of RV parks, and you can't do when you're out there boondocking, uh, to clean off a lot of that debris as I try and be really gentle and pre-wet everything, try and gently get off any of the, the, the larger parts of the bugs that are stuck on there, clean that off before I start scrubbing. So then I'll just get in there with a, a wet rag and everything's kind of pre-wet and then everything just rubs off pretty easily with a, a little bit of work. I say easily with a little bit of work, it takes time, but it does get the job done. Another thing I do to try and keep it easier to clean is I, I keep it sprayed with this spray wax. Um, I saw about six months ago, a bunch of the car detailing uh, YouTube channels were just absolutely amazed by this ice seal and shine turtle wax. I'll put a link down in the description to it in Amazon. You can also pick it up at Walmart, uh, but it has uh, wax infused into it. Um, it helps with, with the shine and water repellency. It has that hydrophobic properties that everybody uh, wants on their vehicle. You know, you set the bottle on the hood of the truck if you uh, were to use this on there and it just slides right off. So um, it actually gives you a decent amount of protection from uh, chemicals and it lasts longer than some of the, the more expensive spray-on waxes. So 
Uh, I use this when we're on the road to make it easier to, to clean the front of it, to clean those, those bugs off and keep it protected. While we're talking about cleaning the front of the RV, let's talk about cleaning that windshield. So there's a lot of car detailers out there that will use a very, very fine steel wool. So uh, you, you wet down your window, you use that steel wool, and you are trying to remove the contaminants that are on there so that you can clean it the best you can. Now, the other half of the industry says that they're crazy for doing that because uh, the steel wool will leave behind particles that could potentially scratch the, the window and potentially scratch the paint and leave behind something that's going to rust. So that's both sides of the coin. You can decide what you wanna do, uh, but if you clean that window and you still wanna remove the contaminants and not use the steel wool, you can use a clay bar. If you're not into detailing, the clay bar probably sounds pretty strange, but the clay bar is used on paint uh, on the clear coat to get any of that contaminants off. So uh, you're removing any of those things that are kind of stuck in the paint and it works really well on glass too. So if you want to have your, your glass super cleaned and you want to do it the, the way the, the car detailers do it and you use a clay bar, you really can't go wrong with that. But if you're one that likes to use uh, a Rain-X, this is a tip that I have for you guys is, again, it's that turtle wax stuff. No, this isn't sponsored. I'm not trying to push it. I like it better than the Rain-X. It goes on easier, it lasts longer, and it stands up better to chemicals. So uh, it's really simple to put on. You, you spray a little on the windshield, on the glass, uh, you wipe it one direction, you kind of cross hatch the way that you wipe on the material, and then you flip your rag over and you just wipe off that haze. And it's the haze is really easy. It's like one pass and it comes right off. So that's why it's just so easy to put on. You just apply it and remove the haze. Super easy and works really, really well. Okay, let's move on. Enough about bugs and windshields. Now, this tip is to know the height of your RV, but we've all talked about that before, but being able to write it on the inside of your vehicle so that you know instantly when you, you see a low bridge sign and you have that feeling of, what is the height of my RV? you don't have to worry about it because it's posted right there inside. So I just took uh, a little corner of those, you know, the reminders they give you when you need to have your oil changed. I just took a, a corner of those and wrote the height of the RV and the height of the truck. So that way it's just always there, easy to see, and I don't have to worry about guessing what my height is again. I did both the RV and the truck just because the, the RV for me is really easy to remember, but the truck, when we're going up to parking garages, I just always forget what the height of our truck is. and I never want to scrape the roof of the truck going in just to, just to park somewhere. Now the next tip is kind of in that same ballpark of having that information readily available at your fingertips. So if you're planning a, a big trip and you're planning to go to several RV parks, oftentimes they ask very similar things. So they want to know your license plate, numbers and, and some of this other stuff that would be nice just to not have to go back to your vehicle and figure out all this stuff. So you could either take a, a picture of your license plate and just have that on your phone. You could create like a little document on your phone, like a little note section that has a lot of that information just in one spot. Or you could even just make a card and leave it in your wallet. So that way when you, you go in to, to register, you just have all that information, save you trips in and out. When you get there, you just want to get registered, get to your site and get checked in. So having that information readily available can just make it go a little bit smoother. This next one is one that we don't actually do, but uh, so many people have left this in the, the comments that it's a, it's a fantastic idea is to have a physical list for when you're, you're setting up or when you're tearing down, to be able to go through that checklist and not miss anything before you leave or while you're setting up. Just be able to go through that checklist and just know that you punched all those boxes and you're ready to just relax, set your mind at ease. You don't have to think, did I forget X, Y, Z? No, I, I checked it all and we, we did our list and we're, we're good to go. So having a checklist of those things can be very beneficial for peace of mind and eliminating some of those mistakes that we're prone to when we, we set up and tear down. This next tip might be a, a little strange, but it made a world of difference for us when we were down in Florida, when we were over in the, the humid part of the country and our, our towels just weren't, weren't drying. We got the uh, a microfiber towel. So these microfiber towels, they, they dry really, really fast and uh, they work really well and they're a lot more compact than you would say like a normal bath towel. So um, the fact that they dry super fast, I could take a shower in the morning and then in Florida, I could take a shower in the evening if I wanted to and my towel was dry. 
I do have to say the first time that I used it, kind of felt like I was I was drying off with like a, a tablecloth or something, but day number two, it didn't matter because the thing was dry and that was new and exciting. And I, I actually prefer this over a normal towel now. So a microfiber towel, if you're having issues with your towels drying, or if you're just wanting something that, that's smaller, not as bulky, easier to pack away. We even did them for our beach towels. Can you, can you toss me a beach towel? Thanks. So this is the beach towel that we now use. That They're so much smaller and compact compared to the normal beach towel that we used to use and they dry really well. If you're at the beach, you can dry multiple times and it's not like the thing's just getting waterlogged. So, uh, and it also seems like it doesn't pick up as, as much of the sand and then you're just scraping the sand on yourself trying to, you're like exfoliating your skin as you're trying to dry off. So uh, these microfiber beach towels, they, they pack smaller, they're lighter, they're easier to throw into a bag. I really can't say enough good things about them. We got this as a set of four and it was a, a pretty good price. I'll put a link to Amazon. And then the other ones we had to buy individually. They were, they were a little bit more, but they weren't crazy. For what they do and the fact that we were able to have dry towels in Florida, in the humidity, every day, twice a day if we wanted to, was really, really nice. So the microfiber towels, I'm a big fan of. It's a good size too, but they have different sizes, but it's a good size. Now, a tip that we often see getting passed around is how do you secure things so that when you drive, they're, they're not, like if you have pictures on the wall, that they're falling off, or if you have things on a, a shelf, how do you keep those from falling off? So uh, one good tip that I've heard is some people use museum putty. You can take some of that little putty and you can just place whatever you don't want, your, your decoration or whatever, to not fall off the shelf. You can use that. Command strips are always something that, that people are using. Um, usually you can stick it down and you have that tab that you can pull later so it doesn't leave any residue, easy to clean up. So when we drive, we really don't remove a lot of things. The last tip is for using your oven. If you want to use your oven and not have things burn on the bottom of that pan, uh, a lot of people will take like a pizza stone and put it in their oven on that bottom shelf. And so anything you cook above that kind of helps distribute that heat so that it's not just scorching the bottom of that pan and those, those cookies or that coffee cake or something else that sounds really tasty right now gets ruined. You don't want those things to get ruined. You want to enjoy them. So uh, you can do that if you don't want to add the additional weight or you don't have to worry about that, that stone getting broken as things move around in the RV uh, as you drive around. Because I have heard many, many times how those stones have broken for people. Is you can actually just take that, that top rack and you can put it on the, the top top position that you can and it'll remove it from the flame just that little bit more and we've had great success with cooking cakes and all kinds of stuff like that we haven't had any issues with with scorching the bottom of our pans and not being able to use the oven properly it's worked worked well for us so I hope these tips help some of you. If you guys have any other tips that you're like, man, we really just need to pass this along, please leave those down in the comments. We just love to share things that help people get out there and enjoy that RVing experience and so that they can enjoy their trip and enjoy what they're doing even more. That's, that's what we're all about here. We just wanna be able to share what we've learned so that others can enjoy the RVing experience. So I think that's gonna do it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, being, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video.